for 20 more years. He came to visit his mother and father at Christmas time or New Year's. He saw the conditions of the field and how they had been un not taken care of. Mailer's put about $10,000 of his own money into renovating his old field. He's provided the means to fix up the bleachers, the lights, expand the dugouts, and without his help, there may have been no Westwood Terrace Little League this year. We did not have the funds to operate the ball field this year. I don't think there would have been a season. Oh, I'm very proud of him. But then he's always been a very generous person. But Rick, who's extremely modest about his donations to youth sports, didn't even tell his mom about his latest project. Well, I didn't until somebody else told me. Because of what he has done, at least 65 others in this community have volunteered their services, working nights and weekends, trying to get the field ready for Monday's opening ceremonies. Mailer will be in San Antonio for those ceremonies, a time when this community will gather around him and say, Just thanks from the bottom of our hearts for our children. And the festivities on Monday night start at 6 o'clock at the Westwood Terrace Field. It was my pleasure to play here a long time ago, and it doesn't seem like that long ago, but a lot of good things have happened to me since then, and I just hope that a lot of these kids get the same opportunities that I've had. Thank you. an unsurpassed donation of funds that has not only upgraded the fields but has uplifted the spirits of those who participate. It is for this outstanding contribution of community, community dedication that we, the members and players of Westwood Terrace Little League, present this plaque to Rick Mailer. read it to you. It says, Rick Mailer, with deepest gratitude for your generosity and support, we extend a heartfelt thank you from the Westwood Terrace Little League, 1987. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd just like to say that that it's my privilege to be able to do something like this and it's it's going to be up to all of you to to make this this little league work and and it's the volunteers and it's the the debbie Fays and the leo carrillos that that really put in all the hard work and and uh they're the real backbone behind all of this and, and uh, a lot of people put in a lot of work to to get this field looking the way it is right now and uh, it's going to take a lot more hard work from a lot more people to make it go all the way through the season. Thank you. The spirit of friendship towards this little league organization. Go for it. Uno más. This is the best one yet. Pretty, pretty, pretty. All right. That's right. Thanks a lot, Paul. We're with Atlanta Braves pitcher Rick Mailer here, and Rick has made a substantial contribution to upgrade the facilities he grew up playing on. That's the Westwood Terrace Little League Field, renamed today the Rick Mailer Field. Congratulations. Thank you. It was a long time ago that I was here, and I've uh, come a long way since then, and this is where it all started for me, and, and it means a lot to me for the kids here to have the same opportunities that I get. Why did you decide to make the contribution? Did you come back here and realize something needed to be done to help out? Well, I did. Uh, this winter when I was here, uh, visiting my parents who still live here, and, and I came by the field, and, and I thought that I could use some improvements and, and uh, to, to help, just to kind of help the kids out a little bit. And, and it's something that, that uh, I had wanted to do for a long time. And uh, you know, I think that it's going to work out good. I think it's a good situation here. The people that are in charge here now are, are, are really good people and hard workers, and, and I think it's going to be a good, 
a good situation. Thanks a lot, Rick. Good luck. I know you're starting tomorrow. I... How are you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> Grandmother has a message oh, for you. Okay. She watches you everything. She's real proud of you. So, you take care. So, the biggest thing is to step right where you're throwing. And just like if you're an infielder or an outfielder, you know, you're not going to step over here and throw over here or step over here and you throw this way. You've got to step right where you're throwing. And to use this, the rubber is, is there for a purpose. You have to be touching the rubber, but you can use it to your advantage to, to push off on it. And to do that, you want to use your toes or the, or the ball to your feet. You don't want to push off with your heel because that'll get you off balance. You want to use your 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 toes and the balls and the feet to push off the you when know, you throw like this instead of with your whole foot on the rubber. Okay, you have to be touching the rubber when you throw. It's one of the rules, but uh, the biggest thing is to step where you're throwing, concentrate on where you're going to throw the ball, and, and the biggest thing is just to throw strikes. And as far as, as how you hold the ball or grip the ball, it doesn't really matter. You, know, you, you do whatever's comfortable to you. I mean, I, I hold the ball like this, through the seams, but but uh, when I was your age, I probably threw it this way with three fingers because my hands were a little bit smaller. So whatever feels comfortable for you, that's the way that you throw everything. And uh, I think that one of the things that you you want to think about is to, to try to use more of your fingertips on the ball and throw with your fingertips and not get the ball jammed back in your hand. And uh, it makes it a little bit harder. You get a little better control when you throw with your fingertips, it kind of helps you whether you have three fingers or, or two fingers or whatever. But uh, the most important thing is just to be comfortable and, and for the, the ball just to feel comfortable in your hand and when you throw and that, that uh, not only when you're pitching but when you're in the field or, or whenever you need to make a throw. Just make sure that you have a good grip of the ball so it doesn't slip out of your hands and make sure that you step where you're going to throw the ball. As far as a, as a wind-up goes, it's, it's probably better to, to do whatever you can do to get, to get most of your, your momentum going towards where you're throwing the ball. And just like when you're, when you're in the field, you want to step and go towards where you're throwing it. The same thing with pitching. So when you're in your wind-up, you do whatever is comfortable for you, but, but the most important thing is to go just to step back from the rubber, and then you have your momentum going forward, whether you, you wind up over your head, or whether you wind up here or whatever you want to do. But uh, I think it's a little bit easier if you get yourself squared away to home plate and going that way instead of turning this way and, and winding up this way and you end up with all your momentum going this way and you're trying to throw the ball over there. So, so the most important things for you, I think, is to, to be sure and use your, your toes and the balls of your feet when you push off. Try to use your fingertips and just hold the ball any way that, that feels comfortable to you. Okay? Anybody want to ask any questions? I think that uh, it, it probably just depends on um, how they throw it. You know, it just depends on the individual. I don't think anything wrong. I, I threw a curve ball when I was when I was probably eight years old. So I don't think that there's any real problem with it. Uh, you know, if you throw it right, if you don't uh, put too much strain on your arm, but but uh, you know, it's important to throw something other than just throwing a fastball in the kitchen. And if you can come up with with a straight change or something that's a little bit off speed, it's probably going to help you. you know, some kind of a, a different luck is probably going to help. You. I I really I don't know whether it's good or bad at that age. I don't think anybody does. But, uh, you know, I think it's just up to you. Warmed up before you pitch. Don't try to go out and throw too hard too soon. And then uh, we'll just answer any questions you might have. Anybody uh, want to ask a question? Can you stand behind the rubber? Well, you have to be touching the rubber somehow. 
but you don't really want to do that because you're a little bit further away from, from home plate. You want to be as close as you can. And uh, you, know, you, want to, you want to try to, to use the rubber to your advantage and you have something to push off of. And that's the reason that you use the front off. As long as you're touching the subway, it doesn't matter which side. <laughs> Um, when you get off the rubber, when you pitch, they made the runners go in. And when you get off the rubber, when you pitch, they made um, runners go to it. What's the key? It's a turn and a pulling. And uh, you, know, you don't want to try to flip the ball up there or, or do anything like that. I think the most important thing is, is to pull. And everything that, in all your pitches, really, it's using your fingertips and, and it's pulling the ball. And you, you know, when you throw a fastball, you want, to, you want to get a good pull. And it's the and it's has to, all has to do with your follow through. And when you follow through and you throw the ball like this, you don't try to throw it out this way. And it's the same thing with a curveball. You can't throw a curveball like this. You turn around like you know, this. You turn around too close to the plate. Right? And you want to hold it. The top of the bat, you want to be higher than the bottom of the bat. Right? And you want to hold it loose. You want this to be real loose. So you want to be loose. Then when it hits, you want the back to give a little bit. And that'll deaden the ball. And what you want to do with that is hit the bat like this.